Good morning. Good morning. Welcome to worship this morning as we celebrate the 19th Sunday in the season of Pentecost. Uh, this morning, as you'll notice, we're going to be focusing on prayer and specifically the struggle of our prayer life or the wrestling of our prayer life, that prayer is a struggle for us. Uh, not because God isn't generous. God stands ready to give us more than we could ever ask or need. Prayer is a struggle for us because we have to, throughout our lives, be taught what to pray for. That prayer is an, is an opportunity for us to recognize God's generosity, not our own selfishness. And we're going to focus on that this morning. We'll be following the order of worship that's printed for you in the bulletin. Our opening hymn is hymn 806. May the Spirit of God richly bless your worship today. Please stand. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. If we claim to be without sin, we deceive ourselves, and the truth is not in us. If we confess our sins, God is faithful and just, 
and will forgive our sins and purify us from all unrighteousness. Let us confess our sins to the Lord. Holy God, gracious Father, I am sinful by nature and have sinned against you in my thoughts, words, and actions. I have not loved you with my whole heart. I have not loved others as I should. I deserve your punishment both now and forever. But Jesus, my Savior, paid for my sins with his innocent suffering and death. Trusting in him, I pray, God have mercy on me, a sinner. Our gracious Father in heaven has been merciful to us. He sent his only Son, Jesus Christ, who gave his life as the atoning sacrifice for the sins of the whole world. Therefore, as a called servant of Christ, and by his authority, I forgive you all your sins. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. In the peace of forgiveness, let us pray the, praise the Lord. Let us pray. God, our refuge and strength, have mercy on your church as we come in prayer before you. Answer us not in judgment on our sins, but in peace and forgiveness. Through your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Please be seated. Our first lesson this morning is taken from the Old Testament book of Genesis, chapter 32, verses 22 to 30. It's the account of Jacob wrestling with God. And what's interesting about the account is that at the end, God blesses him. And God had always planned to bless him. That was what he was going to give him out of love and grace. And yet he forced Jacob to struggle for it. This portion of scripture will serve as the basis for our sermon today. That night, Jacob got up and took his two wives, his two maidservants, and his eleven sons, and crossed the ford of the Jabbok. After he had sent them across the stream, he sent over all his possessions. So Jacob was left alone, and a man wrestled with him till daybreak. When the man saw that he could not overpower him, he touched the socket of Jacob's hip so that his hip was wrenched as he wrestled with the man. Then the man said, Let me go, for it is daybreak. But Jacob replied, I will not let you go unless you bless me. The man asked him, What is your name? Jacob, he answered. Then the man said, Your name will no longer be Jacob, but Israel because you have struggled with God and with men and have overcome. Jacob said, Please tell me your name. But he replied, Why do you ask my name? Then he blessed him there. So Jacob called the place Peniel, saying, It is because I saw God face to face, and yet my life was spared. This is the word of the Lord. We'll now hear an anthem from our school choir. Uh, they will sing hymn 877. The congregation is asked to sing in, uh, join in singing verse 4 in the final refrain.
Our second lesson today is taken from the New Testament epistle of 1 John, chapter 5, verses 13 to 15. John here, with one very important phrase, reminds us of the importance of prayer and the blessings we receive from it. He says, if we ask anything according to his will, that part of the struggle in prayer is reminding myself that this is not a blank check for me to just ask for whatever my sinful nature wants, like a billion dollars or a new Ferrari, but prayer is where my generous God gives me everything that is good for me eternally. That's how we look at prayer. John writes, I write these things to you who believe in the name of the Son of God so that you may know that you have eternal life. This is the confidence we have in approaching God, that if we ask anything according to his will, he hears us. And if we know that he hears us, whatever we ask, we know that we have what we asked of him. This is the word of the Lord. Please rise for the gospel lesson. Our gospel lesson is taken from Luke chapter 18, verses 1 to 8. It's Jesus' parable of the persistent widow who, through her persistence, gets a judge who is unjust to still help her out. And his point is, your God loves you. Uh, he loves you. He wants to help you. He wants to grant you things. And so this same persistence and boldness, we know our God will grant us his blessings. Then Jesus told his disciples a parable to show them that they should always pray and not give up. He said, in a certain town, there was a judge who feared neither God nor cared about men. And then there was a widow in that town who kept coming to him with the plea, grant me justice against my adversary. For some time he refused. But finally he said to himself, even though I don't fear God or care about men, yet because this widow keeps bothering me, I will see that she gets justice so that she won't eventually wear me out with her coming. And the Lord said, listen to what the unjust judge says. And will not God bring about justice for his chosen ones who cry out to him day and night? Will he keep putting them off? I tell you, he will see that they get justice and quickly. However, when the Son of Man comes, will he find faith on earth? This is the Gospel of the Lord. Please be seated. We join together in the hymn of the day, hymn 724.
Grace, mercy, and peace are yours in abundance from God our Father, through our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. Again, God's word for our devotion is the Old Testament lesson that Pastor Zeiling read a few moments ago from Genesis chapter 32. Dear friends in Christ, most of you probably don't know that back in my high school days and college, I was a member of the wrestling team. One of your members, Patrick Zabrowski and I were teammates on conference championship team at Wisconsin Lutheran. One good thing about wrestling that makes it different from other sports is you're always competing against guys your own size. Back then I wrestled 119 pounds, hard to believe. Don't weigh that anymore. I didn't have to go up against 250-pound football linemen in wrestling. As a little guy, you know, the big guy could squash me like a bug. But because of the various weight classes, size in that sense didn't make much of a difference. You still had to work just as hard as the big guys if you wanted to win, build up what muscles you might have push-ups, sit-ups, running, lifting weights. But most importantly was practicing the various moves and techniques so that you could score points with takedowns and escapes and reversals and the like, pinhole combinations, because that was the object of the contest, to score points, to get the, your opponent's shoulders to touch the mat. And so we would do our drills over and over and over again so that we could do those moves, carry out those techniques without even thinking about it. You just quickly move, slide from one to another during the match. So in practice, literally hundreds, probably thousands of times, the coaches would pair us up, somebody about our same weight in practice, and would tell us, here's what I want you to work on. Wrestlers ready? Wrestle. You'd wrestle for 30 seconds or so, practicing the move. Get up again. Coach would say, wrestlers ready? Wrestle. And we did that over and over and over again. It all had that goal in mind of preparing us for those matches, for those contests. Well, in our reading for today, we hear about a wrestling match that took place some 4,000 years ago. Involved this man we heard about, Jacob, and a, and a mysterious opponent. And that incident, together with our other scripture lessons today and the hymns we've been singing, that teaches us some valuable lessons about this vital part of our lives as people of God, our prayer life. So, Christians ready? Wrestle. Get ready to wrestle with God in the midst of your trials and struggles. Get ready to wrestle with God to receive his blessings. Now to understand what this wrestling with God was all about, we need to know a little bit about the background. What was going on in Jacob's life? Remember, he was the son of Isaac, who was the son of Abraham. Jacob had a twin brother named Esau. And Jacob had his share of conflicts with his twin brother. He had tricked his brother into giving him what was called the birthright. That was the double portion of their father's inheritance, even though he was the younger son and should have gotten the smaller portion. He tricked his brother. And so when Isaac grew old and thought he was near death, he was ready to confer that double portion onto Esau, but Jacob tricked his father, pretended to be Esau, so that he officially, in a sense, got that double portion of the blessing. Well, you can understand Esau's reaction. He hated him. He was out to get his own brother, ready to kill him, and so Jacob had to flee, flee back to his mother's homeland, and there he got married, he fathered 13 children, gained a large fortune, but he always, didn't always do it with, with pure motives or, or with uh, honest practices. 
Well, after 20 years, God told Jacob that it was time to go back home, go back to the promised land, the land of Palestine. And so Jacob departed. He was wondering, how is go Esau going to receive me? He sent messengers ahead to tell Esau he was coming. And those messengers came back and said, oh, your brother's coming to meet you with 400 men. That scared Jacob, of course, and, and thinking his brother still hated him and was going to kill him. And so he decided he better take some precautions. He divided up his family and his flocks into two groups, sent them across the Jabbok River, as we heard there, so that if, if one group was attacked, the other could escape. And then Jacob spent that night pondering, wondering, praying. What's going to happen the next day? Now, what kind of thoughts might have been going through his mind? Maybe that what he had done to trick and cheat his brother and their father was now catching up with him. Family relationships. Maybe he hadn't really been the one that was meant for the glory and the wealth as the promised, the, the, the bearer of the promise about the Messiah. Maybe he looked back on his life and saw how it was indeed filled with trickery and deceit and saw his sins and, and wondered if now he was going to be getting his, his due reward, that God was punishing him. So it began as a night of reflection, concern. Reflection over his past, concern for his future. We can be sure it was a, a night of pretty heavy duty praying. That's an important lesson for you and me as well. We know that just because we're Christians, we're not just going to sail through life without any problems or concerns, just the opposite. We have trials that rattle us down to our toes and hopefully bring us to our knees. They maybe aren't like Jacob's. We're wondering whether our brother's going to kill us or not. But we got all kinds of problems, don't we? Concerns about our health. When the doctor runs some tests and said, uh, we need to talk. We're tempted to jump to conclusions in a situation like that, right? Think the worst. Fret about our future. The implications it might have with our family. Or maybe, well, the bills start piling up. We're worried about our financial situation. That, uh, you know, maybe we can't keep up with the lifestyle that we've grown accustomed to. Nights become long as we worry about those things material things in, the, in our lives. Or it might be relationship problems too with, you know, at work or in our family situations, with what's going on in our society and in our world. Or maybe our consciences are just bothering us about some persistent sin that we just can't, can't seem to shake. And we wonder, how can God love somebody like me he does, just doesn't seem as close as, as we would like him to be. So just as it was for Jacob, we may find ourselves mentally and emotionally and spiritually wrestling with God. Was well, Jacob's turning all this over in his, in his heart and his mind, a stranger appears to him that night and begins to physically wrestle with him. Now the details Moses gives us are a little bit sketchy here. They wrestled for several hours, it seems, all the way till daybreak. The match was apparently even, Jacob holding maybe a slight edge. And so when the opponent saw that, that he wasn't going to win, or at least he didn't think he was, Jacob maybe didn't know that, but the opponent just reached out and touched his hip, and it became dislocated. But even then, Jacob wasn't going to let go. He hung on. Wasn't going to give up. What's this all about? Who was this man? 
Well, over the course of the match, and especially when he was injured by that simple touch, Jacob realized this was God himself. This wasn't an angel, or, but this is the, well, the se second person of the Trinity. God the Son, who had taken on the form of the man, often called the angel of the Lord in the Old Testament, so that to teach Jacob a lesson. So not only is he already spiritually struggling with God in prayer, now he's also physically, literally wrestling with God. His prayers to God were something very real, something that consumed him, something that, you know, he got himself into totally, body, mind, and soul. He'd been looking to God for help in dealing with his brother, and now he's being confronted by God himself, and, and, and he's pouring all his energy into his spirit, the spiritual exercise. His praying had become a, a literal wrestling match with God. It wasn't a match Jacob was going to give up on, though, easily. When he started to catch on that he's wrestling someone special, when, he, when, he, when his hip suddenly gave out, Jacob still persisted in that struggle. He wasn't going to let this special person go until he had received a blessing. That was the lesson he was learning here. Like the woman in Jesus' parable in our gospel reading who kept on pestering that, that uncaring judge until she got what she wanted. Jacob here teaches us be persistent in your prayer. He wasn't going to let go of God until he received that blessing. And that's the way it should be for you and me in our prayer lives. When struggles of any size crop up, God is saying to us, Christian, ready? Wrestle. We should literally be wrestling with God. Prayer should not just be a half-hearted thing we kind of throw out in the middle of a conversation. No, don't give up. Stick to it until we receive some kind of an answer. God's word is filled with promises that he hears us. We heard it in our epistle lesson today that he will give us whom he loves. He will give us what we ask for. Take advantage of those invitations Come to me, all you who are weary and burdened. Cast all your anxiety on him because he cares for you. Ask and it'll be given to you. Seek and you'll find. Knock and the door will be open to you. When spiritual and physical situations in life begin to chip away at our faith, go to those invitations from God and take advantage of them. Throw your problems onto God's shoulders. Let him carry them. Dear Lord, here they are. Here's what's going on in my life. Give me the strength to handle them. Give me this, we can propose to God, give me this solution to my problem. Give me an answer. The point is just keep going to him. Cling to him. Hang on to him. Persist in your request to him, just like Jacob did here. God has promised never to test us beyond what we can endure. He promises to always give us the strength to deal with the situation. Oh, sure, we're going to keep facing new challenges, new problems. They come at us all the time. But remember that God sends them so that we turn to him, so that we grow stronger in that relationship with him, just like our coaches in those wrestling practices. Wrestlers, ready? Wrestle. So you get better, so you get stronger, depending on God's grace and God's love. He wants you to be wrestling with him over and over again as new situations arise and as old situations persist. And the outcome of that kind of wrestling with God? Well, he promises that it will always be a positive for us. May not always be what, the way we would have it turn out as we would expect or want, but God always knows what's best. He promises that, Paul, in Romans chapter 8. We know that God works for the good of those who love him. Yet, Jacob asked for a blessing, a sign reassuring him that he was that, well, promised, the one through whom the promise would come, that he would be safe in his situation with his brother. And God, what did he do? He dislocated his hip. 
Does that sound like a, a good answer? But he also gave him a new name. His name, Jacob, well, that was the way he'd been living his life for the past hundred years. A cheater, getting by on trickery. But now, God changed his name. No, you're going to be called Israel from now on. That's the Hebrew word for one who struggles with God. His name was going to be a daily reminder to him of just what happened that night and what his life would be like to remind him that he had wrestled with God. He had struggled, and that's what life is for us, isn't it? But it reminds us whenever we hear that name that God's in control, that God will always, that we should always come to God. And Jacob, as he did that, he did receive the blessing. The Lord told Jacob that, well, you've been wrestling with God. And so he named the place Peniel, which means I've seen the Lord. But the blessing of forgiveness in seeing the Lord, in wrestling with the Lord, in receiving God's blessing, it was there for him. The promise of peace between Esau and him was secured. That's the way it turned out. Now, undoubtedly, he was also given the same promises that had been given to to his father Isaac and his grandfather Abraham, that you know he'd be the part of you know the, the, the fulfillment of those many uh, sa- the descendants, like the sands on the seashore, and especially the promise of that one special descendant who would come to be a blessing to the whole world, the savior of all mankind. And with those promised blessings ringing in his ears, Jacob knew, yeah, I've come face to face with God, and look at how much God has done for me and will be doing for me and through me. He'd wrestled with God, and he succeeded. Through prayer and by God's grace, he had now the confidence to face that situation that he was dealing with. The outcome for us in our prayer struggles will always be the same as they were for Jacob. We will receive God's blessing. So don't give up. Hang on to Jesus and his promises of help and assistance. With him at our side, we will conquer even the darkest and deepest of problems. In our prayers, we we are to continually assault God's throne of grace, asking him to, to guide and direct us as he sees best. Let those situations drive us into his word to review those promises of his with his invitation and his promises of blessing to guide and direct us as he sees best. Yeah, the answers may come in in different ways, may come at a later time, may be the very opposite of, of what we had in mind, but they will come. We have faith that God will keep his promises. So, persistently, confidently, cry to him believe that he's there for you. He's already taken care of our biggest issue, right? Our eternal salvation. He did that by coming into this world himself, the son of God. That one who was wrestling with Jacob. He came and tackled the enemy that that we have the most trouble with, and that's Satan himself. Jesus and Satan, they wrestled often. Then on the cross, it seemed as though as though Jesus was defeated. But by his death on Calvary, Jesus, Jesus earned the victory. And his hand was raised in triumph that Easter morning when he rose from the grave and he descended into hell and showed himself alive as the champion. And with him on our side then, we're more than conquerors. Our victory is assured. The knowledge that we will win out over our problems and trials in life That's given to us as well. So let's apply Jacob's new name to ourselves, that we have struggled with God and that we will overcome. Whenever we face those challenges of of body and soul, God is saying to us, Christians, ready? Wrestle. Wrestle with him in prayer. Wrestle. Confident that you'll win the victory. Amen. Please stand.
peace of God, which passes all understanding, keep your hearts and minds through Christ Jesus. Amen. We now join together in confessing our Christian faith using the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand Though the Lord is on high, he looks upon the lowly. According to your promise, we bring these offerings to you in thanksgiving for your grace. Receive these offerings for the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, and use them for the spread of the gospel. We ask this in his name. Amen. We continue with the prayer of the church. Uh, this morning we will have a prayer for the family of Pastor Aaron Strong, whom God quite suddenly called from this earth to heaven this past week. Almighty God, heaven and earth are full of your glory. All the stars, the sun and moon, the sea and clouds are messengers of your wonder and might. For your creation, we praise you, O Father. We pray for your church and your people. Grant us ministers and teachers who are led by your spirit and earnestly hold forth your word of life. Lord, guard and defend our homes, that parents may be kept in the bonds of love and rule their children well, nourishing them in truth and righteousness. Bestow your favor on our industry and agriculture, education and science, uh, the professions and the arts, that in their advancements your people may prosper. Lord, we also pray for all who may be ill in body, mind, or spirit, for all who may be in danger, for all who may be in anxiety or perplexity, or for all who may be suffering disappointment or defeat. Especially, Lord, we thank you for all the mercies with which you blessed our fellow believer, Aaron Strong, now fallen asleep. We thank you especially for having brought him to the knowledge of your son, Jesus. We pray that you would comfort his family and all who mourn his death with your precious promises, and cheer them with the sure hope of a blessed reunion in heaven. And hear us, Lord, as we bring you our private petitions. Heavenly Father, you did not spare your own Son, but freely gave him up for us all. We ask all these things in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. And in his name we join to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Please be seated. We continue with our next hymn, hymn 867. Just a reminder, 
uh, that the, after verse 1, we will not sing the refrain. It's verses 1, and then we sing verse 2, and then the refrain. And then we will sing the refrain after each verse following. <coughs> Please stand. O Lord God, our Heavenly Father, pour out the Holy Spirit on your faithful people. Keep us strong in your grace and truth. Protect and comfort us in all temptation. And bestow on us your saving peace. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. <laughs> Brothers and sisters, go in peace, live in harmony with one another, serve the Lord with gladness. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine on you and be gracious to you. The Lord look on you with favor and give you peace.
please be seated. We'll join in our closing hymn, hymn 721. We'll sing verses 1 and 3. Good morning again. Uh, first off this morning, thank you to Pastor Knazer for coming and sharing God's word with us this morning and for giving me the free cannon fodder that you were 119 pounds in high school. So I'm going to remember that. But uh, as far as announcements today, you'll notice when you look at the bulletin, the middle of the bulletin, uh, the staples here, half the bulletin is announcements. Uh, there's a lot going on. So I would encourage you to please read what's going on. Uh, three that I would highlight today. First off, just a reminder that next, not next Sunday, the Sunday after, our combined Reformation worship service on October 30th. Sunday, both first and late service will be over at the gym in Woodlawn. Uh, we're going to have a joint service. And after those, after the late service, we're going to have a call meeting uh, for a couple teacher and the principal positions. So very important, October 30th, please uh, hope to see you there. Then today we are studying, or studying, we're starting a new Bible study topic. We're going to be talking about vocation, so that'll start today, right after this service downstairs. And with that, may God richly bless your week. <laughs>